Hey, what's up guys? Chris Trini here for Chris Core Productions. Welcome to this week's video. Today we look at how to turn a 2D flat image into a 3D environment. Going from this to this. Alright, so this is an After Effects tutorial for the most part, but in the beginning we're going to need a little bit of help from Photoshop. But no worries, it's just a few simple steps. So once you open up your image in Photoshop, just go under Filter and select Vanishing Points, and this is going to open up a new window. And the process here is just very simple. All you have to do is just click, drag and click, drag until you create four points, which will create your first plane. Now from here you can adjust it or extend it, or you can create new planes off of it as I'm doing right now. And to do that all I have to do is Command or Control for PC, click on these white dots, and as soon as I drag them out, you can see that it's creating new planes. So pretty simple here, you just follow the geometry in your scene, and once you're done, click on the top left corner here on this icon, and just export it for After Effects. So it's going to create a VPE file. This is what I love about Adobe products, everything is super compatible with each other. So once we're in After Effects, just go under File and Import Vanishing Point. So you're going to see that it's looking for a VPE file, and once you find it, just select that. So you can see that it's not just importing one thing, it's importing some images and a composition. And if we click on that composition, you're going to see your 3D environment with a camera and a, um, a parenting null. And everything is pretty much set up and ready to go. So you can see that as I'm messing around here, we already have a 3D environment that we can somewhat navigate with with a camera. And obviously, you have some restrictions. Now this is a vertical photo, so I'm just going to go under composition settings and make it a little bit more video friendly. So I'm just going to do the regular uh, 1920 by 1080, just standard high definition. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to try to experiment and create a camera movement. But I hate controlling the camera from its properties. So what I'm going to do is create a new null object. And I'm going to name it camera control, make it a 3D layer and then parent the camera to that null object. This way we have a little bit more flexibility and uh, we see what we're doing. So. I'm going to keyframe the position, orientation, and just everything else for good measure, but we really need the position and orientation. And I actually like this as an ending point, so I'm just going to grab these keyframes, push them back in time, in our timeline at about 10 seconds. And then in the beginning here, I'm going to just experiment and try to find a good starting point so that we can get a nice uh, camera movement that can really show that our environment isn't just a flat image. So you're seeing some white and uh, that is pretty much the parts of those planes that don't have any texture. So it, it means that the image or your picture uh, ended there. So just be aware of that and try not to show it in your, in your composition. All right, so now that we're happy with our camera movement, it's time to add a little bit of detail in order to further sell the idea of three dimension. So in order to create these volumetric cones of light coming in from the side window here, it's actually really simple. All you have to do is create some solids make them 3D layers, scatter them in Z space so that you know you still have that feel of parallax and three dimension, and then create some masks so that it looks like it's coming from the opening of that side window. And then bring down the transparency so that it's not too obvious and just adding these little subtle details just helps you sell your shot even further. Once you do that, just feather the mask out. Then you can create some other masks near the window or near the, near the floor so that it doesn't look like it's just cutting off. It has more of a smoother fall off. All right guys, that is where I'm gonna end this tutorial. Um, obviously you can add as many details as you want. You can add elements. Actually, you can add a plugin called Element 3D from Video Copilot and add 3D objects in this scene. At this point, there's so much that you can do because you have a full 3D environment inside of After Effects, so you can really go nuts with this and add as many details, particles, anything that you want at this point. Now, a few more things that I want to mention is that my website is still down. I'm still working on the new version, but in the meantime, I did create a Tumblr page that you can go check out. I'll post the link in the description, and I'm just going to be posting all my photography work, so it's going to be my portfolio for photography. So feel free to check it out. And also, I started making two videos a week instead of just one and they're going to be split off into tutorial Thursdays and filmmaking Mondays. But I want to start branching out and doing different things. And also soon there'll be a third video a week, which is short Sundays, where I'm going to be making a short, 
breaking it down with a tutorial and also doing a behind the scenes look at how the video was made so you can see the whole process from start to finish. Anyways, I'm really excited for all the changes that are coming to this channel and this is all thanks to you guys. You helped me reach over 40,000 subscribers, which is insane. So I just want to thank you. And I can't properly thank you right now because I don't have a website, but as soon as I do have a website, I'm going to have a ton of free content for you guys. Anyways, I'm rambling on, but just know that there's a ton of new content and I'm really grateful for all you guys' support. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Corp Productions. I'll see you next time.